Hello and welcome. This is a presentation on nonlinear functions. I had actually delivered this as a public uh, class at the Lyceum in December of 2014, but had not recorded it back then. So I'm reworking it as a screencast so that I can upload it onto YouTube and I can make it even more available. Right? This is the first time I'm doing this, converting a live class into a screencast, so I'd appreciate any feedback that you have. This presentation is on nonlinear functions. Okay. Nonlinear functions are, are uh, models, mathematical models of physical phenomena that we often encounter. However, unlike uh, linear functions, they are a little more harder to analyze and uh, predict. The behavior is harder to predict. Right. In many circumstances, uh, when we try to model physical phenomena, we see that higher, uh, uh, higher order terms uh, have very, very small coefficients. So we just ignore them. But those small terms can actually affect the behavior of functions in certain circumstances. And so this uh, thing, this uh, presentation, is an introduction to these kinds of functions and how they behave and what we can do with them. So we'll start off with, let's just do a quick recap. So this is going to be a recap of uh, basic ideas which you know, many of you might already be familiar with. So if you find, if you already know about all this, you can skip this and go to the next. The basic idea is we, we're going to discuss functions. Okay. What are functions? So functions are uh, mathematical uh, uh, concepts which we use to describe how you know, one uh, elements of one set change into elements of another set. So for example, I can say f of x equal to x squared, which is uh, what you call a function that will square its input. Right? Or you can say f of x equal to sine of x. Just take the uh, trigonometric sine of uh, x expressed in radians. Things like that. These are the ways in which we can, these are examples of functions, simple functions. Uh, the, these two these two are non-linear, but we have, you can have linear ones as well, say x plus 5, or uh, you know something like 2x or something like this. All these are linear functions. These last two are linear, the first two are non-linear because they have higher order terms. Terms, higher order terms meaning terms with a power more than this, more than one. Now, usually when we talk about functions, we talk about solving them. So you say y equal to x squared and you, pl you, you can plot it or you can you know, find the value of uh, the function for a given value of x and something like that. But in this uh, series, we're going to be mostly talking about iteration functions. And this is a little more, uh, this is something which you might not have done. So the basic idea is to take a function, say this one which we have up here, and say f of x equal to x squared, and apply this function repeatedly. So, all right. so if I were to take f of x equal to x, if I were to take f of x equal to x squared, and I say f of 2 will be 4, F. And then you apply this, you apply f on this. So you say f of 4 equal to 4 squared is 16. And then you say f of 16, you say square of 16. Then you say square of that, and square of that, and square of that. Right? This is called iterating. You apply a function repeatedly on something. And uh, this actually gives you certain kinds of behavior that. Uh, you know, which we will find interesting in the upcoming segments. Okay. So applying a function, let's say, if I wanted to apply f of x on a function, uh, so f of x equal to x squared, so if I apply this three times, so it would be f of f of f of x. So you want, I want to find three, uh, I want to apply the squaring function on a number, say, two, three times. You can write it like this. You will get the third we get the third, what we call the iterate of uh, the number 2 under the function f. And as a matter of notation, we tend to write this like this, f three times of the So this is f of f of f of uh, 2. Right. So this is the notation which we're going to use repeatedly inside in, in this uh, series. Okay, screencast. So this is the iteration of functions. And what we are interested in is finding behaviors of functions when we do this. Now let's move to the next thing. So we have our notation and we have the basic thing what we're going to do. What we're going to discuss right now is what are called orbits. Okay. 
the term might sound technical, but it, it's, it's a simple thing. It's just uh, successive iterates of uh, of a number under a function. So if I were to take a number, say in this case, uh, let's uh, let's just say a simpler function. Let's just take f of x, f of x equal to two x, you know, double the number. Then you can start with one. F of one would be the iter uh, so we'll start with you know, orbit of one under f. Right? The first thing would be one. Then you apply f once, it would become two. You apply f to that, you get four. You apply f to that, you get eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-eight, etc. These are the iterates of uh, one under the function f of x equal to two x. Right? And this series is called the orbit of one. Right? So the orbit of one is successive iterates of a of, of a number under a function. So I'm going to be we talk about you know what is the orbit of this number, what is the orbit of that number, how does the orbit behave, and things like that. So it's this orbit thing that you know we are interested in, and we can actually make predictions about orbits and you know where this thing will go if you start iterating and things like that. Now, given that we know what orbits are now, there is there are some interesting kinds of points. We'll discuss many of them in the upcoming segments, but the first and the simplest one is what's called a fixed point. Is something important, so just uh, in case. Fixed point is this is a point that is fixed. Right? This means that f of x will be equal to x for that uh, for that point, right? and this is something which is. Uh, uh, which which varies depending on functions. So if I were to take f of x equal to 2x, this function which I just talked about earlier, 0 is a fixed point. Right. Why? Because because f of x will be, f of 0 will be 0. Right. And then you, you apply that as many times as you want, it stays there, it doesn't move, it's fixed. Right. On the other hand, you just saw over here, if you take 1, it's not fixed, it just keeps on increasing. Right. If you take 0, it's what we call a fixed point. And uh, you can see how this uh, behaves. Right? You can see how the, uh, functions behave now. Let's take let's take a few simple examples and see how this thing goes. So consider this. You take an interpreter so that we can do this easily. So that I have square root, sine, cos, and things like that. And take a number. So let's say five. I'm going to say square root of five. I get this square root of that, like this. And I keep doing this again and again. So this is iterating manually. Right? And you can see that as I iterate, this thing slowly becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. It tends towards 1. Right? Yeah. And 1 is, you know, under square root, 1 is a fixed point, because square root of 1 is 1. Okay. Consider the other one. Consider sine of uh, something expressed in radians. So let's take uh, sine of... Uh, Pi. Sine of pi is this. It's it's infinitesimal small. Let's take sine of pi by two, which is one. It's a sine of uh, pi by two. Just a little bit less. If you iterate over this, this doesn't go down. It's a sine of some kind of that. Just a two, for example. Sign of three and then sign of this. So if you take, if you apply sign repeatedly on a function on a number, you see that it slowly goes down, lower and lower and lower and lower, and ultimately it tends to zero. We can see this happening. If you write a small function, iterate. You say this is the function, this is the start point, and this is the number of iterations, and we can see s equal to start. And you can say for i in range iterations, and you can say s equal to the function applied on s, and you just say print simple function. So just try this. Iterate sign starting from two hundred times. So you can see that it starts off uh, 
from something 0 0.9 and keeps reducing, reduces, 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 it goes down like this. If I were to take, let's say, 1,000, it would go, it's even lower, 10,000, it's even lower. So it's slowly tending towards 0. Right? And this seems to hold for many of the points. This is an example for 3, an example for 3, 5, let's say. It's gone down to almost 0. Right? 5 by 2, anything. So anything you give, it slowly tends towards 0. And 0, of course, is a fixed point for some. You already know that. So 0 is a fixed point for this, for this function. Zero is also a fixed point for sine of x. Now let's take another one. Uh, let's try cos of x, which is a little more interesting. Yeah. Let's just take pi. And we'll take cos of x. Cos of x and cos of uh, a function, and then now we try this. You can see that it goes to zero point seven three nine zero eight five one three three two one five. And this seems to happen for anything which you do. 3, for 2, for 1, anything. And this is a fixed point. This is this seemingly uh, is a fixed point for cos of x. This seemingly random number is a fixed point for cos of x. Well, you know that it's actually, because of my definition up there, you know that this is a, this is a num point at which cos of x equal to x. But, you know, it, 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 it's not straightforward what is so particular about this number. So this is the cos concept of a fixed point. So that, that ends our first segment, which is just an introduction to function, what is iteration, what is an orbit, and what is a fixed point. Now we'll discuss more types of points in the next segment.